Utilizing pre-war tech and tactics, the Brotherhood of Steel were once a force to be reckoned with in the Mojave Wasteland. But after being crushed by the NCR at Helios 1, they retreated to Hidden Valley and play a relatively insignificant role in Fallout New Vegas. However, like most of FNV, the faction was once planned to be grander. This is the untold tale of the Brotherhood of Steel. To begin, there's a cut holodisc called Aster's Journal that was meant to appear at Hidden Valley. Initially, I guessed it was an unused quest objective from Still in the Dark, the quest where the courier retrieves three holotapes from fallen paladins around the wasteland. However, Aster's Journal uses an entirely different naming convention. It's possible that Aster was a cut NPC or even that this holodisc was related to a cut quest. But that's simply speculation, as there's no other reference to this character in the game files. I talked about this in my video on Mr. House's cut content, but it's worth mentioning again. The quest, The House Always Wins Part 5, has an unused quest objective, where you could have convinced Mr. House to spare the Brotherhood, in the final game, you're forced to destroy them if you side with Mr. House. If you enter the Brotherhood of Steel base without Veronica, you're forced to deal with a nearby NCR soldier, Ranger Dobson. You can either kill or trick him into leaving with a speech check. Alternatively, you can break or rig his radio to explode, but there's a third cut option where you could have repaired the radio, but the script mentions that this was cut. There's no other information, so it's hard to say what would have happened next. Perhaps a commanding officer would have ordered Dobson to move somewhere else, completing the quest. Since the player can warn Dobson about the nearby Brotherhood base, it seems plausible he might have radioed in their location. Maybe the NCR would have even assaulted the Brotherhood of Steel base. The Brotherhood of Steel NPCs also have unused AI packages to use gender-relevant bathrooms, which would have been super... immersive, I guess. They also have an unused faction sniffer guard dog, but I'll get more into that in a future video. The Brotherhood has a lot of dialogue about their VR training, but unfortunately, you're never allowed to experience it for yourself. However, at one point in development, it was planned for the player to use the VR training pods, similar to the Operation Anchorage DLC from Fallout 3. In this simulation, you would have defended Hidden Valley against an Enclave Assault, with other paladins and initiates. HV Game Score Message would have tracked the courier's kills while playing. While HV Pod Sim Selection Terminal is an unused terminal where you would have been able to change some of the parameters of the game, including the types of allies and enemies. Perhaps there would have even been multiple simulations with varied settings, weapons, or objectives. Beyond just using the VR pods, they were also linked to a cut quest, centered around Melissa Watkins, a Brotherhood initiate. To start, we can infer a lot from her in-game dialogue. First, it suggests a rivalry between her and Veronica. I'm surprised you're not wearing that hood to hide your hair like you usually do, Veronica. Still hiding that hair of yours, Veronica. One of her lines while Veronica is in your party has a note that reads, dislikes her intensely. Veronica? So, I think we can safely assume this quest would have fleshed out and played out around the rivalry. Next, it's clear that Melissa is excellent at the VR training simulations 
and dialogue implies she holds the high score. She also has a cut AI package for using one of the pods. It seems that at some point, the player could have hacked the terminal that controls the simulation, or perhaps checked Melissa's pod for modifications. There are two cut notes that reveal Melissa was playing the sim on easy difficulty, while everyone else played it on hard. From here, the player could have told head scribe Taggart about her cheating, as he still has an unused AI package for checking Melissa's VR pod. Perhaps Melissa would have been exiled from the Brotherhood. Regardless, I'm sure Veronica would have had a lot to say about it. It seems likely that the player would have received a reward and positive reputation for breaking the high score. It also seems plausible that exposing Melissa would have made attaining a high score easier. I asked Veronica's writer, area designer Eric Fenstermaker about this, but unfortunately, he had no recollection of this cut quest. The Brotherhood has relatively little content, so the VR training simulation, Melissa Watkins' quest, Aster's journal, and more could have gone a long way in further fleshing out the faction. Guard dogs also would have made infiltrating and destroying their base much more difficult as well. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.